Hello, my name is Michael Lambert, and today I'd like to talk a little bit about what's been going on the last week or two, uh, and also I'd like uh, to talk a bit about the Labour Party conference and about uh, Keir Starmer's leadership and so on. Before I do that, though, um, I have over the past few weeks mentioned that I've produced a little book. Um, it's a it's a sort of comical take on uh, on the history of Brexit and so on. It it is now finally available. Um, this is it. It's called uh, Brexit. It's not going too well, is it? Um, it, it it's available from my website. Uh, the address is very easy to remember. It's ml44.com. I'll leave a link and I'll mention it again before the end of the the video. So uh, Liz Truss in her third week seems to have caused a, a, a massive uh, financial crisis, um, seems to have done everything everything you could possibly do to, to cause a great deal of damage and panic, and uh, has introduced, or Kwateng has uh, introduced a budget which is, seems uh, deeply unfair, and I think which most people see as being very unfair, a budget which benefits only very rich people who, who will be even better off and uh, who are very unlikely, I think, to spend their money uh, in, in the economy or to, to spend any more money um, because uh, that's said to be the justification for, for giving tax breaks to, to rich people is that they'll spend money and that everybody will benefit. Well, of course, that's been much discredited. And... Uh, well, it's his it, job to know what she's going to do next. This, 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 this dim-witted, awful woman who's now the prime minister. Do you know? I was looking back at uh, how she became elected. Um, when it came to the the, the election, the, the election in parliament between the, uh, the the members of parliament, there were actually five rounds, and in four of the rounds, she came third. Not even not even first or second. She came third. In, in the fifth round, she became uh, um, second to, to Sunak. In the first round, she got 50 votes out of 357. In other words, 307 of her own MPs didn't think she was the best person to be prime minister. Uh, uh, this is a woman who was a you know, very, very strong Remainer. <clears throat> and uh, under their the extraordinary system, which I'm sure will be changed uh, as a result of all this, the extraordinary system that Conservatives have for electing a new leader. Um, the vote was put out, as we all know, to, to the Tory party membership, and it ended up that the 160,000-odd uh, uh, Tory members, totally uh, um, unrepresentative of the population as a whole, uh, mostly uh, elderly people, mostly white and uh, mostly quite well off, all, all voted for the for the white lady rather than the brown man, and that's who we have um, as a prime minister. Completely utterly clueless, dimwit. I think the most frightening thing about her is that she is uh, renowned for being stubborn, and uh, and, and for being reckless. And I think uh, there, there there cannot be two two worse qualities to have in a prime minister uh, at a time such as this. So so heaven help us. I I said right from the start that I didn't think for. for she'd have any chance of, of, of surviving. Her government wouldn't survive, and I still believe that to be the case, though I have no idea how she's going to be brought down. I can't believe that the Tories would have another leadership election right now. I don't think the country would stand for that. So who, who knows? Maybe we'll have a general election. Maybe, maybe there'll be a complete collapse. Maybe people will be out on the streets. Who knows? But I don't think we're going to settle down and, and get back to normal anytime, anytime soon. <clears throat> So what I what I would like to talk about, about though is um, the Labour Party and the Labour Party conference, and uh, in particular I want to talk about uh, Keir Starmer. Now Keir Starmer's always seemed to me to be a, a thoroughly decent, nice bloke. You know, I mean, he's somebody you could rely on, and he's somebody who will be always be honest with you. A man whose integrity is is, is unquestionable. But as a as a party leader, I, I, I'm not sure. I've been very disappointed. I think he's had so many opportunities to attack the government, but the moment he said uh, he wanted to back Brexit, then of course he's he he, he uh, handicapped himself so much because that limited the, the the extent to which he could go for the government because Brexit has clearly been the big big disaster of this 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 parliament. And uh, at the conference, two things struck my eye. The first was concerning PR. 
Now, the moment you you, you, you mention electoral reform or PR, people's eyes glaze over. It's like when you talk about tax evasion or wasting public money. People don't want to really hear about it. But nonetheless, it's a very important, important matter. Now, for years, the uh, um, majority of the uh, uh, Labour Party members have been in favour of some sort of electoral reform. The reason being that... Uh, the first-past-the-post system is very much to the advantage of the Conservatives. They need far fewer votes in order to form a government than the Labour do. And so it's, just, it's, 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 it's quite unfair, and, uh, and the membership have to recognise this, but and, and until now the unions have tended to vote against any reform. But this year, for the first time, uh, a number of the unions voted in favour of uh, electoral reform, and so I think it was 61% voted for electoral reform and 34% voted against. So clearly the Labour Party want electoral reform because they see that as obviously being an, an, um, you know, a, a help and that it would, would give them a better chance of being elected in the future. There's only just one problem though. Keir doesn't want it. No, no, Keir doesn't want it. Uh, and he's not going to have it. And uh, he says it's not going to be in the manifesto and it's not uh, anything that's on his uh, on his horizons at all. He prefers uh, the, the, the present losing system whereby the Labour Party are almost always in opposition or far more it's far more of the time they're in opposition than ever in government. And uh, he, he, he presumably is afraid of having to enter into some sort of coalition. He'd rather have opposition than uh, government with a... Uh, the help of a smaller party. Um, it, it, it makes no sense to me whatsoever. And I think his position probably is going to be quite difficult to sustain. And I think over the years he'll come under more and more pressure to to, to, to give in. But the fact that he objects to it seems to me, uh, it seems to be crazy. I, I just just cannot understand it. Um, but, but but there it is. We'll, we'll see what happens. <clears throat> the other thing is, of course... Um, Brexit. Now, I'll read you what he said uh, at his conference. This is what he said. He said, conference, the policy of my Labour government will always be to make Brexit work. Sorry, Keir, uh, Brexit cannot work. There was never any possibility of Brexit working. It hasn't worked. It's been a complete and utter failure. Neither you nor anybody else will ever make Brexit work. It can't work. Brexit severely damaged our economy. It, 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 it meant that we volunteered to go by behind a huge barrier of bureaucracy between us and the EU. Which is uh, which we which we had been within for such a long time. It was madness, and it resulted in a, a complete collapse, in a, a huge uh, reduction in our exports to the to the EU. Despite the fact that we're still importing as much as ever, and uh, and and uh, we don't have any 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 controls on what what comes in. Starmer, like uh, like Truss and like Quarta and like them all, they're all talking about growth. We have to go for growth. They they talk about growth as a, some kind of some kind of a new 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 idea, a new policy, new thought. Who ever thought to go for growth? Who doesn't want to go for growth? What country has ever said well, we don't want growth? Oh no, we want to stay where we are. Everybody wants growth, but suddenly now you start talking about it. it's government policy, it's Labour Party policy. Keir wants to go for growth. Where's the where's the growth coming from? Our exports are shrinking. We are forecast to be the nineteenth slowest growing economy in the G twenty next year. Everyone can see that the, the economy is collapsing. Who's going to want to come and invest, especially after Trust and, and Quarteng's fiasco last week? Who's going to want to come and invest in the UK? Supposing you're an American company, a Japanese company, a Chinese company, you want to you want to supply the EU, huge, huge market. Are you going to come and set up in a country where every time you send, send some goods to one of your customers within the EU, you've got to start filling in forms and delays and obstructions? Of course not. There's no, there's no, there is no way to make Brexit work. There never was going to be a way to make it make it work. But you see, what Keir is worried about, he's worried about the fact that there are people in what the red wall seats who voted for the Conservatives and who voted for Brexit. 
and who believed that uh, foreigners were coming and taking all our jobs, and who believed that they were using the National Health Service, which we were paying for, and they believed that civil servants in Brussels were telling us what to do and we had no control over it. And he's worried, Keir is worried, that unless he says and continues to say that um, there's no way we're ever going to rejoin the customs union the single market or, or especially apply to rejoin the EU, he's worried that if he says that, they won't vote for him anymore. All these people have absolutely been ruined. Their lives have been ruined by this Tory government, but he still thinks they'll still vote Tory because of Brexit. They won't care. They've all forgotten about Brexit. All they're concerned with the fact is they can they afford to heat and eat. And if only, if only, if only Starmer had had the, the courage, the nerve, right from the start to criticise Brexit all along, and to say it was a mistake and to point out the mistakes and point out what was going wrong, he'd have now a few, huge following of people who, who, who would have supported him just because of that. But no, he can't say anything bad about Brexit. It's very sad. It's very sad, but it's totally misguided. And I think, you know, we see now how excited everybody is. You know, you remember a few months ago how, how everybody was, you know, so many people were so pleased and excited that we got rid of Boris Johnson. Everybody thought, oh, our worries are all over. We got rid of this, 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 this charlatan, this crook, this liar. And look what we got in replacement. Worse. And so there's all this excitement now about uh, Labour doing so well. I mean, the Labour not doing well. They're not doing better. They're not doing anything clever. They're not doing anything new. It's because the government is a complete and utter absolute catastrophic disaster. Because it's got an absolute idiot prime minister. And an equally idiotic chance the exchequer. We've got the, the, the whole government running around like headless chickens. They've got no idea what they're doing. That's why Labour's so popular. Because people don't like the Conservatives anymore. But this could change. People have very short memories. Not long ago, J Johnson was everywhere. Johnson, the story was all the time about Boris Johnson. Now he's never heard of. He's forgotten. He thinks he's coming back. He's not. But all this crisis we've got now, that will pass. In the same way, COVID passed. It, 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 it will all pass. And in two years' time, when it comes to the next election, they won't have a, 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 a supposed lead of 20 or 30%. It might be. 5%, in which case they'll lose the election. Under PR, they wouldn't necessarily. But under first past the post, if they've only got a lead of 5%, they'll lose the election. And so, as I say, I, I am so disappointed that uh, that Starmer has, uh, has come down definitely against PR and uh, this going on about uh, making Brexit work. Uh, you know, when when... Starmer said about two months ago, he said there was no possibility under him of Labour uh, even applying to join the customs union and single market. I mean, joining the customs union and single market it would it would mean we would have to have free movement again, but it would at least, it would solve all our problems, our, our major economic problems in terms of exports and imports to the EU and so on. And it would solve the Northern Ireland problem and so on. But he said absolutely you know, he was not going to do it. And when people like me said, this is madness, this is stupid, this is the wrong thing to do, uh, all sorts of commentators I saw were saying uh, on YouTube and, 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 um, and radio and television and so on, saying, ah, ah, but you see, he has to be careful. He has to move slowly. He can't upset the red wall seats. What he's going to do, he's going to con them all. Con them all. He pretend that he's dead against Brexit. And then when he gets into power and he's prime minister, he, he, he well, for his first term, apparently the story went well, for his first term, he'll just pretend to go along that, that you know, we'll try and make it work. And then towards the end of his first term, he says it's not really working. And then gradually, gradually, maybe in his second term, he would say, uh, we're going to have to we're going to have to talk to you and 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 uh, we're going to decide to go back into the customer union single market and then gradually 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 we eat back in. It ain't going to happen. If that's his policy, if he's going to con all these red wall seat people, uh, uh, he won't last more than one 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 one, one parliament anyway. And, and besides which, I think I said before. Um, if Labour win the next election, they will immediately be blamed for everything that's gone wrong. And people do have very short memories. It'll be, uh, look at the mess the economy's in, well, it's all because of Labour. Labour don't know how to run the economy. And all that's gone on under the Conservatives, you know, people think this is the end of the Conservatives. People talk about this is, they're, they're, they're that for forever. This is the, the, the ruin of the Conservative Party. It isn't. 
because people will forget. And many, many people naturally will go back towards the, the Conservative Party. And when it's pointed out, when the Labour in government next time, how badly they're doing, how badly the economy is doing, people say, well, yeah, I should never have trusted them. It's, uh, it's a bit of a mess. Um, I, I think what I'm trying to say is that I don't think the Labour Party should get carried away with how things are at the moment necessarily. I think that they should be much more concerned about about uh, electoral reform, about proportional representation, and they should be very, very concerned about their attitude towards Brexit. Because unless and until we start moving towards a closer association with the EU by at least joining the customs union single market and eventually trying to re-enter again. Until that happens, our economy will never recover. We're not going to suddenly dis discover that we've got uh, 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 massive, massive uh, deposits of gold or oil or something in Gloucestershire. It can happen. There's not going to be a sudden transformation. There's going to be a gradual tr transformation. The economy is so badly damaged at the moment, uh, principally because of because of Brexit. So anyway, that's 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 what I think about it, and um, uh, and so I, I'm going to leave it there. If I could just remind you once more, if you're interested in, in having a look at my little book, there it is. It's um, ml44.com. If you've been kind enough to watch this far, thank you very much, and uh, until next time, bye for now. <clears throat>